the only thing holding his soul at rest. Well, give it back. You can't. He's awake now. What's up, watchers? C.T. Reese here, and I'm pretty excited to say I'm finally getting ready to go see the very hyped up new slasher horror feature in a violent nature coming from first time feature director Chris Nash. Now, as you might know, before I go to see a movie, I usually like to watch the trailer. I check out the filmmakers and the cast, but I try to avoid reviews. Now, it seems like many of the more well-established reviewers on here were lucky enough to get screeners and get reviews up this week. So YouTube has just been like a minefield for me trying to avoid having my expectations influenced or spoiled before going in to see this one. That being said, it's really hard not to get caught up in the hype surrounding In a Violent Nature ever since its premiere at Sundance back in January. This one promises to be a new take on the slasher genre where we follow a Jason-like mute killer as he targets a group of teens in the wilderness after one of them removes a locket that I guess had him entombed for the previous six decades. Now the twist here is that this movie is apparently made from the perspective of the killer. Now, of course, there have been you know, slasher scenes from the killer's perspective before, ever since the beginnings of the genre. I'd say like the opening scene of Halloween is particularly a famous example there. I'm really interested to see how this idea is gonna play out across an entire feature film. Now, the trailer and the title of the film both lean hard into the idea of the nature of things, and I'm willing to bet this new slasher on the block is gonna be a bit animalistic in his killings. The 4-3 aspect ratio is not an accident. Yes, it gives the audience retro vibes, since really many of us saw these slasher films on small square TV screens initially, but when you think about the animal world, in general, prey animals, they have you know, wide set eyes that allow them to see an extremely wide field of vision. Predators have eyes set in front, giving them narrow, focused vision to best track and kill their prey. So using this narrow aspect ratio as opposed to a normal cinematic widescreen presentation puts us as the audience in that predator role with the narrowed vision. It's an extremely clever choice. I'm excited to see what else the filmmakers have in store. Now, I think the look of the killer here is fantastic. The mask or helmet that the killer's wearing, it just has an instantly iconic look. The hook and chain as his weapon, that's an absolutely brutal weapon choice. But I'm also expecting a movie that's probably gonna be pretty slow and maybe even plodding along at points interspersed with just random intense violence. So I'm curious to see if this killer does a lot of stalking or if he's more just in a constant pursuit of his next kill. Oh yeah, In a Violent Nature is also hitting theaters unrated. So we've got no MPAA here to cut out all the good parts. So I'm obviously pretty pumped to see this one. Unfortunately, I also stupidly scheduled a haircut appointment for today. So stick around, I'll be right back with some trimmed up locks and hopefully some rave reviews for In a Violent Nature. You guys never heard of the White Pine Slaughter? Wow, now that was a movie made for the hardcore slasher fans out there. I really dug into Violent Nature, and if you want to check it out, I highly recommend seeing it in theaters. But this movie's not going to be for everyone. If you're not really into horror, if you're unfamiliar with how the typical slasher movie plays out, you're probably not going to find very much to enjoy here, but I also can't imagine many people watching this channel fit into that category. In a violent nature, it did play out largely as expected, with a lot of time spent walking around the woods with our killer with a J name, only this time it's Johnny, not Jason. Which, it's somehow a bit less menacing, but don't worry, Johnny more than makes up for the less menacing name, with a handful of kills that are sure to shock some folks. Now, on the surface, In a Violent Nature is very much a slow burn film, just due to the fact that we're alone with a mute Johnny for the vast majority of the movie. And I mentioned in my intro that I thought this one might plot along a bit at times, and while that's somewhat true, I think there was enough here for me to chew on that I never found myself uninterested. I have to believe that writer-director Chris Nash has a version of this script somewhere where everything's played straight, because we really do get to meet all the stereotypical slasher victims just from a different perspective since most of the dialogue we get to hear is roughly what Johnny gets to overhear. For example, we get to hear the group of teens ragging on their one friend about an awkward encounter with a couple of girls at a gas station on the way up. Now, in a normal slasher movie, we'd be following the teens up to the cabin in the woods and we'd get to see the full encounter while also understanding that these girls will probably end up as fodder for the killer as well. And wouldn't you know it, Johnny does run into a couple of girls out in the woods on his travels who are presumably the same girls from the gas station, and, well, you can probably guess how it goes from there. 
I also enjoyed how we got to hear some backstory on Johnny the Killer, and it seemed like depending on who was telling the story, the timeline changed a bit. So one story, it's 60 years, another it's 30 or 20 or 10. I enjoyed that little bit of ambiguity and the way in a violent nature played around with the fact that this was not the first time Johnny had woken up, and it certainly matches up with you know, messy timelines we're used to seeing from long-running slasher franchises like Friday the 13th and Halloween. So I encourage anyone who watches this one to have some fun with it, since you really get the typical slasher setup, so can you figure out who the final girl's gonna be? Or can you figure out who's gonna be the last one to sacrifice themselves to help the final girl survive? Like I said, there are a lot of stereotypical characters here, like you've got the stoner guy and the jerk. They're pretty easy to pick out, but since we spend most of our time with Johnny, a lot of the fun for me while watching this one, and really since I've seen it, is trying to fill in those blanks that we're not privy to. But listen, we've got to talk about Johnny, because this guy is about as ruthless as it gets. Now, I want to properly set expectations, and much like any slasher, the audience does not get to see every single kill in graphic detail. There are a handful of kills in this movie that are essentially set pieces that everything else hangs around. And I think In a Violent Nature did a good job of sort of slowly ramping things up as the movie progressed to get to these extra gnarly kills. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of the big kills. You'll know exactly which ones I'm talking about if you see the movie. But one of the things I found consistently disturbing throughout many of the kills was the lack of screaming. Now, slashers are infamous for doing this shot where the, the killer slowly creeps up on someone who just stands in place screaming their head off until the killer finally you know, makes his way over to finish the job. That's not a scene you're gonna get here. When Johnny decides it's time to do some killing, he acts swiftly and methodically. It's really up to him if someone gets to enjoy a quick death or if it's gonna be more of a slow, torturous demise. Also, the super old school firefighting helmet paired with the ax and the double hooked chain, that might be my favorite loadout I've seen in a slasher in a long time. The helmet, it's immediately iconic. You can be assured that there are going to be folks out there working on their own versions of this thing immediately after seeing the movie. Comparing it to Jason's mask, that's more than a bit premature, but the imagery is undeniable. And I never really thought about a formal mask tier ranking, but Johnny's mask is definitely up there with the best of them. And it's always great to see one of these baddies have their own signature weapon as well. Leatherface has his chainsaw. Michael Myers loves his big ass kitchen knives. Freddy's got his gloves. Well, Johnny's got his hooks in a chain, and you do not want to be on the wrong end of one of those hooks because he is damned proficient at using them. And since I talked about it in the intro, I wanted to mention that aspect ratio again. I think the 4-3 squarish box was the right choice for In a Violent Nature. It definitely accomplished its task of narrowing the audience field of vision, but the one thing it really does is make Johnny look absolutely massive at times. The 4-3 ratio on a movie theater screen, it's just much taller than usual. So when we're following Johnny around in the woods from that third person perspective, he just takes up a ton of space on the screen. And I'm not sure if I should credit the director or the cinematographer, but either way, I felt it was very clever and very effective. So I can absolutely say that In a Violent Nature met my very hyped up expectations. I'd give it a personal four out of five with the understanding that this movie's not gonna be for everyone. I found it to be a refreshing take on a genre that's really already been rehashed and redone in so many ways from serious to campy to meta deconstructions. I'm really looking forward to adding in a violent nature to my yearly Halloween watch list. I think it's going to be a blast to revisit this one again. And if you dug this review as much as I dug in a violent nature, I'd love it if you could hit those like and subscribe buttons. I'm really just getting started on here and I'm coming out with new movie reviews and retrospective looks back on old favorites every week you're not going to want to miss out on it. So until then, don't forget to keep it rad.